Hello you guys, welcome to episode six of the apartment makeover series. Today we are working on the kitchen. I didn't really think I was gonna film an apartment makeover video dedicated to the kitchen, but as time went on, I started making more and more changes to the kitchen. So I feel like it deserves its own video. Really quickly, I wanted to give you guys updates on some of the things that we worked on in previous episodes. First is the staghorn wall. I had to replace this staghorn because I accidentally broke it. So I have this one here right now and it doesn't look great but it will grow in soon Did you uh, see that? <laughs> yeah i know this one's not the nicest everything's growing really well um these lights help out a lot and yeah i love this thing and then here in the living room we've changed quite a bit and this was also based on some of your guys' suggestions. I really like this little rug but it was too small for this space and instead of getting rid of it I got this larger jute rug to layer underneath it and I think it works really well like the black with the black striping over there I'm pointing with my feet. Also if you guys didn't know I did ballet for like eight years. We added more shelves and books to the bookshelf. I'm also going to add a terrarium here. I'll make a video about this when I do. And what else? Found this thing um, to put behind the couch and it kind of like makes the living room feel more together or like closer because this is a pretty large living room and when the couch was against the wall, everything felt very spread out. Also now I can like put little things behind the couch and we can also put our drinks there and stuff. Those are the quick updates. I think I'm gonna make like a full update video on all of the rooms and stuff. So moving back to the kitchen and the dining area. This space, it is just like every other room where it's very sterile and all white slash gray or steel appliances. I'm trying to kind of combat that and add in a little bit more color, warmth, and kind of like a cozy feel. I also want the kitchen to be very easy to use and convenient and accessible because Chris and I are trying to eat better. We started eating breakfast more consistently and it has honestly like improved our mood and our energy levels a lot. We've also been eating like more smoothies with veggies and fruit and protein stuff and that's also helped a lot. Who would have thought that like eating well just generally helps you in life? I've been told that so many times but I didn't really believe it but it is very true. So yeah, that's kind of like the general idea for this kitchen. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from things that I've seen on Pinterest and Instagram. I like to look at the rooms and the pictures and find what it is that I like about it. And generally I've found that I really like when things are hanging in the kitchen, like pots and pans and like cooking utensils. First I'll talk about what changes we've already made. So I guess starting in the dining room, we have these placemats. They have patterns and they kind of add a little bit of a fabric, like softer feel to the dining room. My dad helped me hang this pendant light. I got it off Facebook Marketplace and it is, or it looks like Louis, Louis Poulsen, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, pendant light. Yeah, I got it for like a really good price, so I don't know if it's actually authentic or not, but it's really cute. And I've been liking orange a lot lately. It's kind of a bright pop of color, but it doesn't deviate too much from my general color palette. And then up here, my dad also did this. This is just a black track light from Ikea. There used to be just like a very basic lighting fixture up here, and I chose black because I think it kind of adds a little bit more contrast into this kitchen because before everything was like so, so white. We put this pot rack up. I'm able to hang my pots and pans and things. It makes it so it's really easy to grab them to cook. And I also think it just looks nice. But the main reason why I actually got this pot rack is so I can hang my hanging plants or my mounted plants on here when I'm watering. So that way they can drip directly into the sink. I will show you guys right now. It drips directly into the sink and it makes watering so, so much easier. I also got this new drying rack for my dishes and stuff. The bottom tray is at an angle, so any water that accumulates on the tray will just drip into the sink. And that's also really nice because the previous tray I had would just like collect water and be kind of gross. I also have this, it's like a roll up dish drying rack as well, but I use this for my potted plants when I water them. Just little things that make my plant care and just general 
life stuff a little bit easier. For convenience and usability, we just leave our appliances out. Coffee maker and rice cooker over there. Then over here's my worm compost bin. And then here are my microgreens. I am gonna talk about these later. This isn't their forever home. They're just here for now because I need to set up an area for them in my kitchen. As you can see, we have a ton of cabinet space. Like there's too much storage. Most of these cabinets aren't even filled because like what are we gonna do with them besides make them junk drawers for like random storage things. So to make use of it, my plan is to create a microgreen setup in here with the grow light and be able to grow some of our own food. I already took one of these cabinet doors out because my plan is to use this piece of cloth as kind of like a curtain door. I think it looks really cute and it adds some type of like coziness and some fabric to this kitchen. I've seen a couple of instances where people use this like curtain method for some of their open storage. And I thought it looked really cute. I think it really warms up the space. I need to remove this other cabinet door and then put this curtain up. By the way, I'm keeping all of these cabinets and stuff. In order to put this curtain up, I am gonna use Velcro. So this is like an adhesive Velcro. I'm going to cut it to size. Let's see if this works. Oh, nice. I think it kind of looks darker on camera, but in person, it's really cute. It adds like a softer touch to the kitchen. It's almost like a little skirt. I really like it. I think it's pretty cute. My thought is that when I need to access this, I can just flip. Oh wow, that works really well. I realized that I didn't explain what microgreens are. I think most people know what they are, but if you don't, they're pretty much just seedlings of herbs and vegetables that people eat before they turn into mature plants. They are extremely nutritionally dense and grow pretty quickly. You can add them in pretty much anything like smoothies or a sandwich or eggs. They're just very versatile and highly nutritionally dense. I think this curtain or this cloth helps break up the monotony of the white kitchen and also has a little bit of a pattern. Wish I would have gotten a little bit of a lighter color because this is pretty dark, but I do like it. I knew that I wanted to grow microgreens, so I reached out to the company Mother. I did a sponsorship with them a while back for my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. I'm using their grow lights for this setup, and ever since I added them, the growth really took off, and the colors of my plants look much nicer, and they're also safe to use in a high humidity environment, so I'm not risking a fire hazard or anything. I knew that Mother also works a lot with microgreens, so I reached out to Mother if they wanted to sponsor this video, and they said yes. Here is the micropod. I like how they don't have that much packaging in their products. Here are like all of the directions and stuff for how to use it. There's even a little video. I like how they have this QR code because it saves a lot on packaging materials. The directions are very simple. You just add water till it gets to the top. I'm growing three micropods with kale, two with radish, and one with beets. I heard that beets are more susceptible to fungus and take longer to grow, so I'm just testing those ones out. The directions say to put in about a tablespoon of seeds. You need to spread them on top. I'm trying to get it sort of even. And what's nice is you only need to fill these up one time throughout the entire growing process of the seeds to harvest. These are some of my kale, and you can see a lot of these little sprouts. I think I might have put too many seeds, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Before I put the micropods in, I'm going to set up the grow lights in this cabinet. You don't actually need grow lights for the microgreens. Like you could just use sunlight and have them on your kitchen counter next to a window, but I want to save on counter space since I have all my appliances out. So I'm growing them inside of this cabinet with zero light. So we'll need the addition of some grow lights. I'm gonna put them up inside of the cabinet um, and suspend them from the top. I originally was going to mount it on the top of the cabinet with like some screws, but the top of the cabinet are these drawers. So if I mounted them underneath these drawers then the light would like move and probably get messed up. But there's a metal track holding up these drawers and I Recently got these magnetic hooks. These tracks are metal, so I'm able to use these magnetic hooks to attach the grow light. And the light comes with these things that are used to 
screw and mount into the ceiling, but I'm using them to put these little zip ties on as loops to then hook them onto the magnetic hooks. Ooh. I was originally gonna put two lights in here, but I think one is bright enough. Inside is all white. There's a ton of light reflecting off all the surfaces. What do you think? Is it good? Yeah. It's, cool. it's like, what's underneath the That's veil? Cool. I mean, okay, this doesn't look like much, but let's add the let's add the micro pods. Now I'm putting in my little micro pods. I'm gonna clean up this cord mess by using zip ties to tie the cords together. Let's turn it on. Voila! And then you can't really see what's going on down here, and if I need to access it, it's very easy to just open this, and I can pull the stuff out. Germination occurs within about three days. I got some seeds already sprouting in two days because I set some of them up two days ago. I'll give you guys some updates and show you the timeline of how that works. These micropods are very user-friendly with a set and forget approach. You prepare the device once and it's ready to harvest in as early as seven days. The micropod does not require a blackout germination or weight on top of the seeds. It's also a reusable growing medium, so there's no need for disposable paper towels or soil. Here are the microgreens ready to harvest. I'm simply cutting off the roots, rinsing the stem and foliage, and now they're ready to eat. You can throw the remaining roots away, but I'm using them for my worm compost. Washing the micropod is also really easy. You can rinse it with water or put it in the dishwasher. To get $10 off your purchase, use the link in my description before shopping and enter the code BENJIPLANT to redeem your discount. Thank you to Mother for sending us these micropods. I wanted to show you guys Theo really quick. Remember how I said that as winter comes, the light from the south facing window is gonna come in a lot more. And look at him on his little beanbag throne. <laughs> He's so cute. He loves sleeping here. I wanted to add some color into the kitchen and I didn't want to put a regular rug in here. So I got a rug from Ruggable. So those are like those washable rugs. I'm sure you guys have all seen like ads for them. I'm going to use this mat in my uh, office instead. Theo, get off the rug. This is the Ruggable rug. Um, I got it because it has some pretty nice colors and it's soft, but it's not like your typical cotton rug. It is machine washable, so I can just throw it into the washing machine if I need to wash it. Also, it makes it so Theo can hang out in the kitchen with us because he doesn't like sitting on the bare floor. He likes being on mats or rugs or carpets and things. It's so cute. This rug is pretty much the house's entire color palette. It adds a little bit of cushion on the floor. Theo. This is a west facing window and as the day goes on, there's a lot of direct sunlight that comes in. So we got these blinds and now we're able to like actually wash dishes in the afternoon without getting blasted by sun. I have these wind chimes I want to put up on the pot hanger. This one doesn't really make a lot of noise. And this one chime I found on Etsy. It's handmade. And these are little UFO, um, like alien styled handmade ceramics. And this one also doesn't make that much noise. Yeah, it's not like a super nice sounding one, but it looks really cute. Ideally, I would have these out on my balcony, but I don't want to annoy all of my neighbors. So I have them inside. This platycerium that I watered at the beginning of the video is now dry. So now I can just put it back onto this wall. I'm sure you guys remember the avocado that was right here. I decided to repot it since it was really outgrowing its pot. And as I was repotting it, someone knocked on the door and then I answered it. And then I completely forgot that I was repotting the avocado plant. Then the roots really dried up and it is not looking great. So I have this little Song of India tree here instead. A lot of the lower leaves died. Um, the root mass pretty much completely dried up, but it's all the road to recovery. I was looking at the photos that have utensils and pots hanging from the wall, but I didn't want to make any holes here because I was just worried about like drilling into this area behind the stove. Instead, I am going to use these little magnets again. Uh, what is this called? The exhaustion fan cooking the stove roof. I don't know what this is called, but <laughs> you can attach these magnetic hooks to it and you can hang stuff from it. So you know when you're cooking 
and you're using the cooking utensil and you want to stop using the utensil but you don't want to leave it in the pot you would have to like put it on a dish instead i thought i could just use these magnetic hooks that are directly over the pot or the pan that i'm cooking with and so if there's like soup or sauce, it'll just drip into the pot instead of like having to dirty another dish. Next, we are gonna do the fridge. I have this lithograph print that I was going to frame, but I couldn't find a frame that fit. So I used magnets and I just put it on the fridge in the meantime. I actually ended up really liking how it looks. Now I wanna put more stuff on the fridge. So Chris and I have some like art prints and some other things that we wanna put up just to add some art into the kitchen and add some color and just some fun, cute little things that we like. At first I was pretty hesitant to use the fridge to put stuff up because I'm just very used to things on the fridge being random stuff or like report cards. But then I was like, wait, we could just use the fridge pretty much as like a collage of things that we like. I found these little cats on Etsy. I thought they were magnets, but they're actually push pins. I don't have any use for push pins, so I decided to use this magnetic piece of wood that I have and I just pinned all of the little cats on the wood so they're all lined up. My little line of cats. This print is from a Studio Ghibli movie. I think it's from the Tale of Princess Kaguya. And then these three prints I got from the Yoshitomo Nara exhibit at LACMA a while back. Then I got this little orchid magnet from the Huntington Garden Orchid Show. I was looking for fridge magnets on Etsy and I found this. So this is Pokemon Red. It's not actually like a playable game. Um, I'm assuming they 3D printed this out. This print is from our friend Megan, Megan Wang. She's on Instagram and YouTube. Cute print, I love the colors on it. I don't have enough magnets, so I'm also using these magnetic hooks uh, to put up the prints. Chris and I, we can't have cats because we're both very allergic. I'm more allergic than him. I like break out in hives and stuff, but we both really like cats and this is the closest that we can get. It's just adding cat related art or things inside of our home. This is a picture that I took. I've been into finding thrifted frames and then printing out photos to fit the size of those frames. And yeah, so this is like a little one of a, a rock. Is that the Huntington Gardens? Where was that rock? <laughs> My friend Jahao, he made this as a business card and I printed it out larger because I thought it looked super cool and I love the colors. I want to put it on the side of the fridge. That way you can see it from the entryway. I printed these two out of my parents. So I think this one's, yeah, this one's my dad. This one's my mom. Um, I took these photos of them and I thought they were really cute. And I don't have any photos of like my family or friends or anything yet. So my parents are the first two be printed out, but I don't know where I want to put them. I think I want to put them in the kitchen. It looks kind of weird because they're matching frames. It looks sort of awkward. I could put my dad's over here. I think I'll put my mom right here. What do you think, mom? I think she watches my videos. Oh, she's so cute. Here or here? Yeah. My dad can be next to the air fryer. He bought me this air fryer. <laughs> I have some other pictures that I printed out and framed that I want to show you guys. There's this little one of Theo. Isn't it so cute? This little tiny circle frame. I knew I wanted to put a picture of Theo in this one. Over here, this picture of a koi fish. I thought it's really cute and I think the frame complements it really well. Like the orange and the shape. And look how much light is coming in right now. It's really pretty, but at the same time, it can get super hot, especially when you're trying to do the dishes. The lighting at night is also really nice in the kitchen. Before the lights that were on the ceiling, they were like such a bright overhead light that I never wanted to turn it on, but then it also made it super difficult to see in the kitchen. Now that we have these warmer toned lights mixed with this hanging light and then there's a can light back there behind the rice cooker and the coffee maker. This kitchen has much better ambiance, I think is the word. Still functional and you can still see. <laughs> so yeah, that's been a nice improvement. I put this up a while ago. This is a magnetic knife rack. I forgot to mention this earlier when I talked about the things I already did. This is from Ikea. I think it's like 15 to $20. I put Velcro on the bottom corners of this. When it's just loose, sometimes you can see the light 
peeking out. So this is the kitchen. It's not like a super extreme makeover because I did already do a lot of things before I started filming. Um, hopefully I can find some good before photos. I wish I could like paint the walls or like paint the cabinets or something, but that just feels like a lot of work for a rental space. But I think that the changes and additions that we've made make the kitchen feel a lot more cozy and a lot more personal. Like these little touches on the fridge I think are super cute. The hanging pot rack that's like specially for things that I need with like hanging plants after I water them. Also my passiflora, I didn't talk about them because I feel like I talk about them all the time, but they look so cute. Uh, like how it's framing the window. Let me know what you guys think of this kitchen trying to turn a very modernized apartment into something more lived in. And thank you to Mother for sponsoring this video. I think by the time I'm editing this video, the microgreens will be fully grown and I'll have eaten them already. So I think the last apartment makeover video I'm going to do it will be for the balcony and I'm waiting for the weather to cool down so I can actually like go out there and film without feeling super hot and sweaty. And then after that, I'll eventually do an apartment tour or a plant tour. I don't know which one I want to do first. Maybe apartment tour first and then plant tour. Okay. Bye guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.